Hey guys, Marty here. Today I'd like to talk about something that I'm asked all the time in my chat, and when I was a new player, I was really, you know, a little bit confused on this topic, and that's what maps do I farm and why? Now, <clears throat> this video isn't necessarily going to be for people who don't enjoy farming a, a single map or a set of a few maps over and over and over. This is going to be more aimed at people who actually enjoy that kind of gameplay, such as farming burial chambers or volcanoes. People are always asking me, um, what maps can I magic find other than burial chambers and volcanoes? So I'm hoping that this video can serve as something of a guide for how to choose your own maps um, to farm you know, outside of the meta picks. So currently, one of the most popular maps to farm, or two of the most popular maps to farm, are burial chambers and volcanoes. You can see that in the video clips I've got here. Um, they're showing just me and my friend Jake at the start of the league. We were magic finding burials and volcanoes. Uh, I went and got some of this footage just to show you kind of like what it's like, you know. We're constantly getting these big drops because we're magic finding. You know, obviously these are highlights. You're not going to be getting constant drops every 30 seconds. But <clears throat> that being said, you know, it's a very satisfying way to play. And you don't necessarily even have to do with magic find. It's, this could apply to someone who's wanting to push to level 100. Um, but basically the idea is that I'm going to explain how to pick these maps and how people do pick the maps that they farm. So, as you can see right now, I'm doing Shape Channel, um, Shape Volcano, Shape Burials. All those are maps that have uh, specific divination cards that drop in them that are somewhat valuable. But, you don't have to run any of those maps. There are tons of other great maps. This atlas has over 150 maps on it. So, which of them are good? Well, there's some easy ways to look at that. So, for example, I'm going to talk about Dark Forest. Um, we can go to the wiki for Dark Forest here and look at the divination cards that drop. Mar Blade. This gives you an Eyes of the Great Wolf, which is a super interesting ta uh, talisman that gives two random properties of this huge list of all the talisman-specific prefixes. And this item is only available now through Dark Forest. So it's a great divination card to farm, but why don't people farm it? Well, additionally, this place also drops Wolven King's Bite, and this only drops in Dark Forest and Lair. But again, you hardly ever see people running Dark Forest, even though this gives Rigwald's Quills, which if we check PoE trade real quick, you can see Rigwald's Quills are going for about 23 Exalted Orbs on Hardcore, and what if we check Softcore? 14 Exalted Orbs almost. So crazy valuable cards, and yet you almost never see people farming Dark Forest. And so there's a couple reasons why for that. Um, when you're assessing which, div which uh, maps you want to farm, there are kind of five things that are important. So one is accessibility, which Dark Forest has a very low accessibility. It's a high tier map. It has an annoying boss. And in general, it's in a bad location on the Atlas. To run this map, you would have to either shape it to tier 16 or shape Reef to tier 16 so it won't drop so that you can sustain this map. And then you'd have to cut out all your tier 14s, 15s, 16s, whatever, so that they all drop as Dark Forest. And that's doable, and it's certainly an option. But then you're stuck with another problem, which is sextants. So that's step number two is, you know, how easy is the map to sextant? And, you know, Dark Forest has a lot of really good sextants, but they're all red sextants. And red sextants are a lot harder to come by than yellows and white sextants. Especially if you're a hardcore player, you're going to really struggle to buy those. So that's a big problem there. Now, the other two things are the layout, if it has map-specific drops, and then how difficult the map itself is. So the layout of Dark Boris, for anyone who's not aware, it's kind of just a big open area. It's very linear. It's a great layout. Um, but it's a pretty difficult map, too, in that it's a tier 14, so if you want to run full magic find gear, you're going to struggle to get enough damage and survivability to survive in here. And the boss of the map is Rigwald, who has a bunch of immunity phases, he runs away from you, he's extremely annoying. So it's not a very easy map. So that's why this map is not typically farmed, even though it has great drops. That being said, you can totally farm this map. You don't even have to run magic find gear. Because it's a higher tier map, you can decrease that difficulty of the map by wearing normal gear, and you can farm it, maybe fit in a couple pieces of magic find, like gold worms or ventors or whatever it may be, to increase your drops a little bit. But when you farm higher tier maps, you're generally not going to run magic find. So 
you know, that being considered, you know, that's a great map. What about Volcano? This is one of the most popular maps. Um, <clears throat> why, you know, why do we farm it? Well, Volcano does not have a great layout. It's kind of got a lot of backtracking you have to do when you get to the middle of it. It's a very big open area with a bunch of ledges. You have to hop them and down. There's walls everywhere that will block your projectiles when you're playing a build, like Tornado Shot or whatever, magifying it. But it's a low tier map. So if we look at the Atlas, Volcano's right here. It's surrounded by some white sextants. So the sextanting on here, you can put three white sextants. That's great. Uh, if you're doing it as a tier four, you're going to lose the white sextant here. So and uh, lose this one here. So that's a problem a little bit, but not so bad. But you know, again, much easier to sextant. And white sextants are in a, an abundant supply because they drop off of all the low maps. So you get a lot of players infusing those into the game and less people using them. Um, another thing that's great about this map is that it's super easy. It's a tier four map that you can shape into tier nine, so it stays below a red tier map. It's you know you can run full magic find gear and still have the survivability and damage that you need to uh, make it through this map pretty efficiently. And it has good divination cards. So if we go back here, we can see it drops the king's heart, which is a comb's heart card. If you're on softcore, it's not as great of a divination card. We can uh, go to PUE trade and look at the prices on this one again. So king's heart on softcore, you're looking at about a 20 chaos divination card, so nothing too special. But on hardcore, where comb's hearts are much more valuable, it's you know, these ones are price fair, so you don't even think about those. It's about 35 chaos, you can see, for the cheap ones. Um, and the reason for that is that Combs Heart is a really valuable tank chest. So we can see here that the cheapest Combs Hearts are going for about 300 chaos. So farming this map is going to be pretty profitable. But then there's something else that comes into play with these divination cards, and that's how rare are they? Well, in the case of King's Heart, I can tell you from experience, it's not a very rare divination card. You can expect to get one every couple of hours if you're farming pretty efficiently. Now, if we go back to Dark Forest, Mar Blade, one of the really cool divination cards in here, it's extremely rare. It's probably more rare than a Doctor, and it's a 16-card set. So you're going to be less likely to get that card. However, the Wolven King's Bite, which gives Redwald's Quills, is somewhere between Doctor and uh, King's Heart rarity. It's not super rare. Unfortunately, there's not really a database that you can find in game to see how common these divination cards are, but that's kind of a great way to figure out if you like a map or not, um, is you know based on what divination cards there are. But like I said, that's not the only deciding factor. The layout also is very important. And when you farm one of these maps with divination cards, usually the divination cards are only going to make up about 20 to 30% of your profit, depending on your RNG. Uh, the majority of your profit is going to come from map drops, um, currency drops, random uniques that drop, items that drop, things like that, that hold a you know, pretty steady value throughout the entire lead. Currency is always good. Whenever you get an exalted orb drop, a divine orb drop, things like that, you're, you know, it just stacks up and up and up and up. But the smaller currencies make up a huge chunk of that currency you're going to make as well. For example, fusing orbs, jeweler's orbs, um, regals, scours, regrets, all of those are going to have some value throughout the entire lead. And as you run maps more and more and more and more, you're going to get more and more of these dropping. And then also, if you run higher tier maps, your maps it drops are going to be extremely valuable. I was running Elder Underground Seas for a while this league, so it's a tier 16 map, which means that I'm always going to be getting all the lower tiers dropping. And tier 15s are anywhere from like 7 to 10 chaos. Uh, tier 14s are like 5 to 8 chaos. You know, all that stuff just adds up because you're going to get a lot of them when you're running a high tier map. But as a, a drawback of these high tier maps, if you're on hardcore, you're probably not going to be able to run full magic find gear in them. I was doing that for a while and I ended up dying uh, to my own mistake, but. You know, the maps were much more sketchy because I was running full magic find here. Now, that being said, um, Underground Sea is a great example of a map that's run less so because of the divination card. It does have a good one. It drops the survivalist. So if we go back to our handy dandy wiki here, we can go Underground Sea. And we can look at the divination cards here. So it drops some like random ones that are kind of whatever. but most importantly, it drops the Survivalist. This is a three-card set that gives you alchemy orbs. 
seven alchemy orbs, and it's extremely common. So every time you loot this divination card, it's kind of like picking up two and a third alchemy orbs, which may not seem like a lot, but this card drops very frequently. You almost get at least one per map, especially if you're putting a lot of investment into your maps. Um, so as a result, you, you know, at, when you run this map, you're going to see your alchemy orb pile just go up and up and up and up, and uh, you know, you're never going to have to buy them. You might be able to sell some of them. It's extremely convenient. But another reason why people run this map, which is more important, is that Underground Sea has the highest density of any map currently. What that means is the monsters you're going to be killing per second is higher. And as a result, when you kill more monsters per second, you get more loot per second. If you run a map like Strand now, Strand used to be one of the best maps in the game. However, they nursed the density extremely hard to where when you run through this map, you're probably you're going to kill much less monsters total because it's got a lower mob count to um, make up for the layout of the map. But you're also going to um, be killing them slower because when it, you lower the density of the map like that, even though it's a good layout, you know it's just not possible to kill extremely fast or an extremely large amount of monsters per second or per minute uh, compared to something like Underground Sea where it, be, it got this buff because it's an indoor map to where now it's basically just full of monsters. You can't take 10 steps without seeing a monster somewhere. Now, an, an example of a map that's kind of in the middle is something like Burial Chambers, which is extremely popular to farm right now because of the Doctor card. If we go back to here, we can see Burial Chamber and then look at more of the Atlas, of course, and it drops the Doctor, which this is one of the most valuable divination cards in the game. It gives Headhunter, which if you're familiar with the uniques in this game, it's an extremely valuable item. If we go to Path of Exile Trade and we look at the, the Doctor, you can see on Hardcore this card is going for about six and a half exalts. Um, what about on Softcore? Price holding steady at about 7.5 exalts, so even more valuable because Softcore exalts are worth a little bit more. Now, you know, this is an extremely valuable card, but that should kind of tell you something about this map. Even though the card is worth uh, drops in here, it's pretty rare. Um, that being said, when you farm a map like this with a rare divination card, you're kind of accepting that you might go a few hundred maps or even a thousand maps without getting that map or that specific rare drop happening. However, if you run several thousand maps of this map, you're going to start to even out and see uh, closer to the drop rate. We don't have an exact number on the drop rate, but you know, it's not uncommon to go over a thousand maps dry. It's also not uncommon to see someone get multiple cards within a hundred maps if you take a smaller segment of their maps. Now that being said, you know things like this that are more rare, they give you a huge payout um, that you're going to be seeing less often, as opposed to something like the volcanoes we talked about earlier, where it's a common card that you're going to be seeing every you know couple hours, and you're going to get a more constant flow of income or something like Underground Sea, where you're not even going for a specific divination card necessarily, you're going to see a, a huge constant cash flow of the random drops throughout the map. Things like, you know, um, Chaos Orbs, Alchemy Orbs, Exalted Orbs, Divine Orbs, you're going to see a bit more of that in Underground Sea, because you're killing more monsters per second. So hopefully that's, uh, you know, understandable for everyone. Uh, you know, you're going to get an average monsters per second burial chamber because it has a pretty good layout and pretty good density. It's not the best density, it's not the best layout, but it's good on both fronts, as opposed to a volcano, which has pretty good density, but maybe kind of an annoying layout for a lot of people, so they end up not wanting to run it. Um, that being said, I've just kind of talked about the popular maps right now. So there are tons of maps out there that are great to farm, and you can look it up in the same manner. So, for example, Jungle Valley is not a very popular map right now. But if we go to Jungle Valley here, and I would re highly recommend that when you're looking at a map you might want to farm, you go to the, the wiki and uh, get familiar or familiarize yourself with the map's drops as you're going into it. So in Jungle Valley, it drops the wind. This is a divination card for Windripper. So if we go to the wind, we can see it's a... Uh, I think that, I don't know what it is on Softcore, but it's about 30 Chaos on Softcore. And on Hardcore, it should be about 40 Chaos. Okay, people are selling it underpriced. But if we go to the Wind Ripper, I sold one for uh, 260 Chaos last night. See, so it's about 270 Chaos. And it's a 7-card set. 
So it should be about 35 to 40 chaos for this card. Or you can complete a full set and turn it in yourself. Um, but yeah, so it's another example of a map that has a great divination card that's kind of ignored. And Jungle Valley has a really good layout. It's extremely linear, and it has a large amount of monsters in it. <clears throat> so a lot of people kind of just ignore these maps that are potentially very good, but they just you know never try it out because they just get right into the meta picks. Another great example is Laboratory. I can't tell you. Laboratory map. This is a new map, um, but it drops some really cool cards. It drops the Dreamland for Poor Joy's Asylums. These are about 2 to 3 chaos, and they're quite common. And it drops the Professor for Putrid Cloister maps, um, Putrid Cloister being worth about an Exalted Orb, or close to it. So, you know, there's all these great maps out there that people are just kind of forgetting. Another example that's kind of come up this league is uh, Courthouse. This is a new map that um, it drops a card called the Undaunted that was just released this league and a lot of people are kind of taking to this map because it has a very consistent layout so you're always able to get into your groove while farming it and it has the Undaunted which can potentially give you a headhunter. It's a pretty rare outcome but it's a possibility from it. So like I said guys you sh you know you want to kind of look around with your maps and kind of figure things out. Um, if you're struggling, you know, if you want to run a specific map and you're not sure whether you want to run it, I'd recommend buying five to ten of that map and, you know, run them. Roll, try a couple different methods of running it. Maybe run it with one or two sextants, maybe run it with no sextants. Um, try and get your pack size kind of high and see if it feels like a good map while you're running it. And if you like it, then run that map. There's no need to go to these meta map choices. You can totally run any map you want. There are a bunch of people who really just like running the Guardian maps. So what they do is they just farm Guardian maps and Shaper all, all the time. And it's a totally viable strategy. But it's kind of one that you don't really see talked about because most of the streamers, we tend to go towards the Shape map uh, strategies. Um, there are also maps that are completely unrelated to uh, Shaped Atlas strategies, like higher tier maps you might want to run, such as uh, Spider Forest, which drops the doctor card as well some people really like running this map so you know if you want to run that map you'd want to shape your castle runes to a tier 16 so that your 12s downgrade to 11s and then you know you get to run this map and you can farm your doctors there um you know but basically look at the map see if there's any divination cards you want and if there aren't divination cards that you want that doesn't mean that it's not worth farming like i said before divination cards are going to generally make up about 20 to 30 percent of your profit when you're MFing a map like that. So you can still make 70 to 80% of the currency that someone who's farming something like Doctors is um, just by running a good map or a map that you personally enjoy. If you really like running uh, Canyon, which is used to be a very popular map before it got repositioned, um, you can totally do that. It's a great layout. And I'm just going to give you an example here of how Canyon is a really good layout to finish out the video. So. If we grab a canyon map here, this is a map that almost nobody is farming right now, but it's a very good map. And this is kind of what you're looking at in a layout on a map, right? So uh, currently, uh, you know, I'm running my uh, channels, which Cute Dog, uh, the streamer, is very known for running. But you can see this map, it's extremely linear. And if you're running a projectile based build, particularly a shield charge build, you can really just zoom through this map. And see all these currency items I'm getting? Uh, that was seven jewelers, two Zoss Splinters. Um, you know, I got lucky on the breach, obviously, but Zoss Splinters are about two to one chaos right now. So this is just a random map I've, I'm running, and I've already made over uh, seven chaos or six chaos from just some random little drops here. And there's no divination cards dropping, but I'm getting a bunch of returns. And you know, breaches aren't explicit to Canyon, but when you run a map like this, you're going to get a lot of value out of your breaches because it's very open, it's very juicy for that purpose. Another six socket. And, you know, you just keep going through the map, and any map that you personally enjoy is a good map. I actually really like this map, and I might go back to running it for a bit this league because it's, it's just very satisfying to run a map with a nice layout, something that, you don't you know, you can turn your brain off and just kind of go straight line with a map. So when you're MFing, don't feel off, don't feel forced into this little box of oh gotta run volcanoes, gotta run burials, even if you don't really enjoy it. If you enjoy that stuff, then you know you shouldn't feel like you have to switch. But look at this, one monster remaining. I hardly have to do any work in this map. It's a great feeling.
So, like I'm saying, guys, you know, we look at the currency returns here. This is kind of you know, pretty average map where you got a breach in it. So about four chaos of Zoth Splinters, um, maybe two and a half chaos of Jewelers, half a chaos of uh, Chisels, half a chaos of Fusing, a chaos here, and then you know you just get your mixed stuff. So guys, just don't feel like you have to run any specific map. You know, try things out if you want to run um, waste pools, if you want to run bogs, if you want to run fields, any map, whatever map it is that you personally are enjoying, just go for it. Give it a shot. Um, worst case scenario, you find out you don't like that map, you can change your map around. And like I said, I would really recommend buying a few of that map before you commit to farming that map, trying to set up your atlas to sustain it. Because if it turns out that you don't really like that map, it was just kind of you know, more an idea, then you might want to drop it. And you might want to switch to a map that you do actually enjoy. So don't be afraid to try things out. Don't be afraid to try new things. Just because a streamer is farming X or Y or Z map, always be willing to adapt and change and see what it is that you may want. Um, yeah, just give it a try, guys. Have a great day, and thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, it went a bit longer than I hoped, but I hope it was still enjoyable. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And I have a video I'm planning in probably a few more days. Uh, it's going to be on how to roll maps. So I'm going to give some examples of different rolling strategies. Uh, that's a very common question in my chat. And again, it's kind of something that's up to you, but I'll give you guys some outlines of the typical rolling strategies and ways to utilize them more effectively. So anyways, guys, hope you uh, enjoy this video, liked it if you liked it, and I will see you in the next one. Have a good day. Bye-bye.